Hello, so I'm using Vectory again. I'm going to show you uh, how to make a different sort of torch on those sort of storm lanterns with the handles. Uh, and I'm going to do that to sort of show you a couple more tools that are very useful. You could have a, an experiment with to try and uh, realize your own sort of design ideas. Uh, again, as I said in my last video, uh, the uh, left click um, rotates the scroll wheel, zooms, and the right click pans. We have three tabs, object with some primitives. This has text and cameras and lights and uh, loads of other sort of manipulation tools, um, like bending and twisting things and um, various other things. I can get into these in, in later videos. There's so many tools at your disposal here. And then there's the edit tool where you can take a primitive and edit it to be how you, you need it to be. So in this case, I'm going to go for a box again, uh, probably the most useful primitive. And I'm going to pull it up uh, to make uh, a kind of box shape like this is really what I'm looking for. And I kind of want it to have a square ends and be rectangular. So these uh, tabs up here allow you to sort of tweak things. If you want to be really precise, you can put the millimeters in there. And this is where we did the segments. But I'm not going to put segments on today. And I'll show you why later on. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So I press enter and then I have uh, my box. So this is the first thing I'm going to show you. So we talked about beveling before, but I didn't talk much about selection. So if you press M, which means marquee, um, or it's over here in the selection tool, there's lasso as well. Marquee is really useful because you just draw a box and select the bits that you want. I've selected this whole thing. You know, obviously we're talking about individual selections of faces and points and sides in my previous video, but the marquee is great. You press M, draw a big bubble, you select the whole lot. Now I've selected the edges here, which is what I want, but remember one is points, two is edges, three on your keypad is faces, and those live up there if you prefer using, clicking on the tool. So we want the, uh, the edges here. And we're gonna press bevel, which uh, lives over here, but you just press B on the keypad if you wanna save a bit of time, and you pull it in, and it will bevel the shape like so. Now I'm, what I'm looking for is smoothed edges. So I've got these sliced off. Now if I wanted smooth edges without putting the, um, the smoothing tool on, which, uh, the subdivide surface tool that I spoke about last time, if you double click on the handle here, which you do jump around away from you sometimes. If you double click on that, you've got some options here. And the one I want is segments, and it will add segments in. Just smooth those corners off and make it kind of still uh, a cuboid there, but it has these nice smooth edges, which is what we're looking for, really. Now, what I don't want really is this edge smoothed out. So I'm going to jump back in time by pressing uh, Control Z because that is backwards, undo. Um, and uh, I, I want to select everything except that last set of faces. So if I press two, I don't want to press these. So if I press shift and click over the yellow ones I've already clicked, it will deselect them. And this is what I want. So these back edges all smoothed out by pressing bevel, which I'll do like so. And I want this front end nice and square. And then I double click it, add my segments. That's exactly what I'm looking for there. Lovely. Now the next thing with this kind of storm lantern thing uh, is a big old lens on the front. It needs to be bigger than uh, the, the body of the thing for it to look right. Um, so what we can do is if we press tab, that snaps to different viewpoints on your shape. And if you ever get really confused about where you are, this little one up here, fit the view A will get you where you need to be. Uh, it has lots of snapping functions. They're all controlled with this magnet here, but I don't usually touch them because it's usually quite smart and gets, gets right what I wanted to do. So if I snap to the front here, you can see that the, the cursor snaps to the middle of the shape, and I want this to come out and cover the edges like that. Just about there. If you can't get it quite right, we can adjust it later on. So that looks perfect to me. And then I'm gonna, um, you know, we could just put it back in there and that would be fine, but I'm gonna put it over here, sort of the size that I want. Um, and I might put some more radial segments in there, but other than that, it looks fine to me. Now, here's the important bit. Because they're so close together, selecting this, because it's on the same layer, will be really difficult. So this is your one chance to do this. You're gonna press enter and you can move it now to where you want it. And I would just, if you want to keep it set, shunt it away so that you can get your marquee tool in between the two. Otherwise, it's kind of stuck on there and you've just got to go back and do it again. So I've got that there. 
Uh, and what I'm going to want to do is join this to this. And there's a tool called the bridging tool that does that. Um, so you're going to stick your cursor, select three for the faces. You can stick your cursor in there. Press shift and double click that and click the waffle. And I've selected that face. I'm going to go in there and select that one as well. And I'm going to press V. And it's used to connect them together, but recently it just cuts that face out. And what I think it's trying to do is give you a solid face there and a solid face there. So if this happens and you see a red line, it means that your, your surface model, essentially what this is, is broken and you can't really use it. There's a little fix over here. If you press this one here, it will cap the end. So we've got this red line. Say if you want to 3D print this, you couldn't because it's, 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 it's an empty volume. It doesn't have any substance. So if you clicked on this, it seals it up again. Uh, and there you've got a, a, a solid object. If you press three, it will select the face, and then this other face I've already left B, like so. And if I press B, it will join the two together. Now, I like to add a few segments in here to smooth out a little bit, but there's the beginnings of my kind of storm lantern type thing. I'm gonna put the smoothing on this in a minute just to smooth some of these areas out. So if I wanna keep the lens uh, nice and crisp at the front here, I need to select these layers here. Oh, I missed that one there. Let's escape if things go wrong. Press shift and double click on that. And then another one, come on. And you press this one here, I call the roll of sweets. Um, but I've selected the edge there. Uh, and then I press the bevel, like I did in my last video. To put a slight edge on, and that will stop the smoothing affecting this lens, which I want to keep quite crisp at the front. But the rest of it, I want it to sort of blend it in together. Now, to finish this off, I'm going to put a little handle on the top. There's several ways of doing this. Um, I'll do a couple here. So there's the top. I need a face, essentially, to um, start doing this. Now, because I didn't do it at the beginning, uh, it's kind of hard. I, I need to sort of draw um, some shapes in the top of this. The easiest way i found to do this is the cut tool. So if you press C or cut, or it's over here, I can draw some lines across, and it will basically slice up my shape so that these are separate entities. So I can press like that, and I put some cuts in there. Now, mine's set to sort of click uh, oh, it went a bit wonky there, so we press Control Z. It's designed to sort of click to the squares to keep things all parallel. Have a try. Sometimes it doesn't work for me. I don't know where I'm going wrong, but a bit of perseverance usually gets you there. Uh, there we go. And there, so I've cut all of those up there, like so. And I've got my first part of the handle. Now, what I could do is just press Extrude, which is uh, this one here, or Shortcut E, up like that. Pull that across and look at it this way and put another cut through here, like that. And then I could select that bit with three and extrude that out again. In fact, I might, before I do that, just change the angle slightly so it goes down. And then I've got that there and extrude that one out like so. And uh, there's my other handle. And what I can do is I can grab this gray thing to sort of pull that in. And then you've got this kind of nice, nice shape like that. Um, and then I put uh, the smoothing on. So I go into the object menu here. And I go down to subdivide surface again. And I select level three. It will smooth out my handle. My computer's just processing that now. It's struggling a bit today. Um, and it sort of smoothed that all out and made it all kind of ergonomic. And then I've got that kind of storm light kind of effect there. Uh, another thing I could do, if I go back in time, I press some control Z and undo all my, all my work there, is where I cut that square there before, I'm going to cut another one this end. And I'm going to make a kind of looping handle. So I press cut here, there. Um, I don't think my cuts are totally straight, but I'm just kind of doing it as a demonstration. Uh, if I were to select these two squares by pressing Shift, selecting them both, and then going over to the bridge tool, which is over here, shortcut B, uh, and I can change the strength to make the handle taller, and I can add segments to make it rounder, like so. And that, that's a bit of a crazy handle there, but then I can also sort of tweak it across here, and make it a bit bigger and smaller, and you know, all those sorts of things, edit it so I can get it just how I want it, something like that. 
if you fit fingers in there, but you get the idea. And then if I were to go then back to the object menu and go to the subdivide surface, the smoothing tool, select that, and then select that, I don't know, three again, two, whatever you're looking for. Uh, my computer's going to take a bit of time to process that. It's a bit slow today. Uh, there we go. And then you get that sort of shape. So lots of different things you can do with the, the bridge tool and with the, the cut tool. And it can sort of really you know, make some interesting designs and give you a very different aesthetic from where, where we got to last time. And obviously with that first video I showed you, you could add a lens detail, buttons, all those sort of things, add a, add a texture in the library. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, the other one. It could be a sort of visible green or what have you in a kind of plastic looking thing. So that's uh, that's what we're going for today. So uh, hopefully that was useful. Um, I'll make some more videos and uh, give you some more tips and hopefully you can use those to design uh, your, sort of your own ideas.